You are tuned in to a special Player Spotlight interview on the CS Podcast. Welcome to another episode of the CS Podcast presented by the NUC NFL Draft Bible, bringing you the names that you need to know first since 2002. Visit NFLDraftBible.com. I'm your guys' host, Chris Shanafelt, and joining the show now for a player spotlight interview is what they call a diamond in the rough. I mean, this is probably the most athletic uh, player that I'll be talking to in the entire 2016 NFL Draft class. I'm dead serious. Um, by way of Portland State University, he's uh, Tight end slash defensive end, uh, Dom Njai. And, uh, Dom, I appreciate you uh, taking some time this afternoon. We've been connected for quite a while now. Um, now, taking a look at your background, I mean, I see you're from Senegal, Africa. Uh, you moved uh, to the U.S. when you were eight years old. You have three brothers and a sister. And one of your brothers, uh, El Haji, uh, he uh, it was actually on the show a couple years ago when he was getting ready for the NFL draft. He had a stint with the Cleveland Browns and uh, was just with the Brooklyn Bolts of the FX that fell uh, this year, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, one of your cousins also played a defensive line uh, with the uh, Cincinnati Bengals. I'm just curious, uh, how did you and your brother uh, begin playing football, uh, seeing as you came from Africa at the age of eight years old? Um, we started playing football late in our careers. Um, we, uh, we were basketball players to start with. Like Growing up, we, when we came from Africa, we moved to New York. And it was all basketball from there. Like at first, we we thought about being soccer players, but <laughs> but it was too cold. So um, we decided to go indoors, be basketball players. I mean, we were pretty good basketball players, you know. But people always looked up, uh, looked at our physical makeup, and always asked us why we didn't play football. We just told them our love for basketball was was great. And and like as the years went by, like for me, for me. Um, I started playing bas I started playing basketball like competitively and like it was really going good. I had colleges looking at me, colleges looking at me and just everything was going well and and like people always still try to make me play football so I always had that in the back of my mind that I wanted to play football and like from watching it and growing up watching, you know, Keo and Javon Curse and guys like that who were like my favorite players, um, it was it was pretty cool to always watch football so it made me always wanted to play it. And behind, like, like in the back of my mind. So, like, um, it was like my junior year. I, I was coming off a really good year of basketball, and there was a new football coach that got hired, and he just would not leave me alone, and would not like, would uh, would not try to like stop making me like. Would I, he keep trying to make me play football, and I didn't know what to do. <laughs> so basically, um, I decided to like um, finally try to join the team. My senior year, my basketball coach wasn't too happy about that. Uh, he was kind of like pissed off about that. But I just told him I just wanted to try out because I didn't want to have no regrets. And I tried it. And a lot of people told me football would be a really good thing for me to play. And I tried it. And, and, and it worked itself out, you know. So, yeah, so the here I am with that. And my brother, he, um, I was the one who got him to start playing football. He, he was so stuck in basketball until junior college. And I told him, man, like, for you, I feel like you got a better chance if you play football with your size and your ability. So that's what made him turn the corner. And from he went even later in the years, his juco route to go to play in football. Yeah, and, and you know what? Your brother had a great uh, a great time at the University of Nebraska Kearney, a Division II school. He uh, made a lot of plays over there. And like I said, he uh, spent some time with the Cleveland Browns and was with the Brooklyn Bulls of the FXFL this past year. And, uh, you know, a, as for the both of you, I mean, it looks like you both have uh, made the right decision to eventually uh, play football. I mean, who knows what would have happened if you stuck to basketball. But right now it looks like you guys are in a pretty all right place uh, with your football careers. I mean, a lot of potential, that's for sure. Um, talk about making the decision now coming out of high school uh, before you were actually at Portland State Dom you're actually at the University of Arizona uh, were there any other schools interested in you and uh, why did you feel at the time that Arizona was the best fit for you um, coming out of high school um, I played about eight games eight high school games and like coaches college coaches recruited me they really liked the way I got off the ball and it was like my explosion off the ball. So, like, it was like a lot of big schools recruiting me, like UCLA, 
Arizona, Pittsburgh, um, uh, University of Miami, Hawaii, uh, schools like that. And um, when they was recruiting me, they was they knew that I was raw. Like I, I didn't have a lot of experience playing football, but uh, they wanted to take a chance on me. But Arizona was the first school. Uh, Jeff Hammersmith, he was my, the guy that recruited me at the time. Was like the first school to really like, really like show like really good interest in me. And they're like, I was just loyal to the fact that they was the first school to do that. So um, I went there. I decided to go there because um, they, at the time I wanted to play defensive end because I just liked the position um, at high school. And uh, from watching like my former guys play the position, it just was fun just getting off the ball at high school. So it was just like um, I saw like they had three guys drafted that year, Brooks Reed, DeAndre Reed, Ricky Elmore, and I was like, that's a good fit for me to go there. And, you know, uh, you know, things things changed over there. So basically that's what happened. Yeah, I see that you went on to redshirt your freshman year in 2011 at Arizona, and then in 2012 uh, you mentioned you wanted to play defensive end, and that was probably the reason why you went to Arizona. You actually appeared in two games at tight end, uh, and then after that, I yeah. mean, the rest was history uh, at Arizona. Uh, wh- why did you decide to leave? Was it the lack of playing time? Was it that they had you at tight end? And uh, how did Portland State oh, come no. into the mix? Because I see that quite a few guys left Arizona to go to uh, PSU. Yeah, um... Well, the thing was, the guy who recruited me, they all got fired. So all the whole staff. Mm. And I, I, they wasn't going to register me that year, but they decided to last minute. Like, like I'm talking about, like, the second game of the season, like, headed to, like, USC-type uh, game or whatever. But they, they got fired, and a new coaching staff came in. And before the new coaching staff came in, I had gotten, like, a, a, a knee injury in practice. And... The new coaching staff came in, and when they came into the staff, I wasn't I wasn't like back on from the injury list. I wasn't back, and uh, I wasn't fully healthy yet. Came in, um, like they didn't know who I was. I had no identity with them because I registered that year, and I had no identity in the system. It was Rich Rodriguez's system, spread offense, and playing in a, a three-three-five defensive system where three down linemen, not four down, four three, because I was a traditional four three down, you know, type guy. I wasn't, the, I'm not the heaviest person in the world. I'm not 290 to play in the uh, three, three, three five. So they try to try me at all different positions. You know, I was a natural defensive end. Besides being a natural defensive end, I could play tight end also. And then when I appeared in the games at tight end, I was just, uh, we were just uh, blocking tight end. So that's what basically happened there. And then, um, I just, I just wasn't probably the most happy with my role there, so uh, I feel like it was best for me to just transition to another school. And uh, a lot of guys who left Portland State was because, I mean, who left Arizona was because um, just, just because they just didn't fit in the system. And it was the the coach that recruited them there got fired, and so they decided to go elsewhere. So that's what happened. Okay, and, and yeah, I mean, did, did you decide to go down to the FCS level at Portland State so you could, you know, you know, go in there and play right away? Was that was that a factor in this yeah, uh, the yeah. transfer as well? I, I had, yeah, I had an offer to go to UNLV or like just a, a lot uh, some other uh, Division One FBS schools and stuff mm-hmm. um, like Memphis and stuff like that, but I didn't I didn't want to sit out, so I wanted to play right away. So I went to uh, Portland State, and <laughs> it's just a funny twist of events because. The guy who recruited me for Portland State, uh, he was a great man, uh, Mike Sheffer. He's he's a CFL coach now. Um, he was my deep then coach there. So I came to Portland State, and I was doing really well, like my rest of sophomore year. And I played in every game. You know, uh, I, I, I led the team in tackles against my parents my, my rest of sophomore year. Like, I was just like, just a, you know, I was – I wasn't still fully polished, you know. I still had a lot to learn, so you know I was developing under that guy. And then, right after that year, he left. He he, he left to the CFL. <laughs> so I was just like, wow, another road. Not, not, I'm not gonna say a roadblock, but another coach who I had promised with left, just like the first one from Arizona. So um, it was just it was a new thing where I had to get in. I got a new position coach, and um, he was a decent ass coach, and and he 
he he was a good guy. He was a good guy. Uh, he his system, the way he he wanted to be line to play was not um, towards my game. I, tried, I had to adjust, and it worked out. I adjusted, and I did well at it. Did pretty well. Um, made a lot of plays against big name schools and stuff. And and um, but the thing was for me, I feel like I could have I could have did more in 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 in, in his. Uh, and his system, so I, I feel like I could have played some tight end too to help the team out, and that's what I did. So to just to basically showcase my uh, versatility and stuff. Yeah, like, like you said, I mean, your your first year at Portland State, you know, you're back at defensive end. Uh, things are looking great that season. Uh, you played in every single game. I got the stats right here, 15 tackles, three tackles for loss, and two sacks. The following season as a junior, um, you had 18 tackles, five and a half tackles for loss, uh, three sacks, and two forced fumbles. Again, that was your junior year. I, I got to think it, it looks as if you're just going to be getting better and better year after year. Um how yeah. tough of a decision was that this past season to say, you know what, I'll uh, I'll take one for the team. I'll, I'll play tight end this uh, this season, and uh, you know, keep the defensive end play. I guess in, in the in the past, I'll I'll switch back to tight end. How tough was that for you? Because I know I know, and you could you already said it a few times here today on the interview. I mean, you you love playing defensive end and getting after the quarterback, getting off of the ball. Yeah, I love playing defensive end and getting after the ball, and I also love playing tight end too because. It's fun when you're blocking, when you're fun when you're blocking guys, and and it's fun playing in a hit position, being an H back, being able to catch the ball. And those those things are fun, you know. So like, uh, but the the thing with me is, um, what like I was developing really well at this event, and and a lot of my my stats, like a lot of the stuff don't show, but if you watch the film, every lot of stuff that wasn't stats, like QB hurries, just just pure just. Uh, explosiveness off the ball, just stuff like that was, you know, the stuff that don't show up in stats, you know. But um, but when I was playing tight end this year, um, I was just I was blocking uh, primarily for the team. That's all I did. And when I did run free routes, I would uh, get open or the guy from other team would uh, uh, hold me for a PI. So it's just um, I feel like I feel like um, I didn't. I'm not. I'm I'm, I'm the guy who didn't get every like opportunity like everybody else to really showcase what they can do from a full like from a full like set point. So so basically I, I mean I feel like once I get that real opportunity, like that's why I feel like I'm really a diamond in the rough because like it, like I haven't really showcased exactly what I'm capable of. Yeah. And yeah. you know that from just oh, yeah. following me for over the years. Oh yeah, I, I mean, I totally agree with you. I think uh, you know once you once you do get your opportunity, because I do think that you will have a, a very you know eye opening type pro day, and we'll talk about that in just a little bit. Uh, I, I think you will ultimately get get a opportunity at the next level. Once again, he's Dom Enjai, the defensive end, tight end, really hell of an athlete out of uh, Portland State, joining me here on the CS podcast presented by the NUC NFL Draft Bible as he gets set for the 2016 NFL Draft and. Uh, Dom, I know that you had an opportunity to participate in the FCS Bowl, which took place a couple weekends ago, but the Portland State Vikings, you guys were still in the FCS playoffs. Um, unfortunately, you guys fell to Northern Iowa that same weekend as the All-Star game. I got to think they had to hurt a little bit. Um, but talk about the team success, though, if you can. I mean, um, I'm a big fan of FCS football, and uh, you guys looked like uh, you know you were the best team in the FCS at, at a, you know quite a few different times within the season you guys finished the regular season nine and two with uh wins over teams such as washington state you guys absolutely dominated north texas i believe 66 to 7 um and it was the first winning season since 2011 at portland state um and it was just last season in 2014 you guys finished uh three and nine so here you guys are finishing a nine and two in the regular season nine and three after that playoff uh, loss against northern iowa how were you guys able to turn things around uh, so quickly um Honestly, it was something that that was that was brewing, you know, over the years, and and you know, with a big help from a great head coach, uh, Bruce Barnum, who who came in and took over the staff. Uh, it kind of, you know, the culture, the culture, the culture changed. You know, I mean, he 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 
set a different standard. You know, he's, he's like a, he's a great person. He's laid back out type, type coach. He doesn't. He's never in your ear yelling, cussing you out. Just that he 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 has belief in his players, and he's a fair coach. So when 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 players saw that, like it gave it gave us the opportunity to basically showcase like what we could really do. So it basically it was it, it made the season fun. You know, it, guys had was having more fun. I practice didn't feel like um, it didn't feel like it was uh, you know boot camp or anything. Everything we did was fun so like like a lot of people a lot of people think we we just did had a miracle or did something crazy but we always had the talent we always had the talent we just our coach uh coach barnum and his and the way he gathered his staff they helped us put it together and 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 we won games because of it and I think it makes it so much easier when you kind of just sit down and realize, you know, uh, football is just a game. I mean, obviously, it could take you it could take you uh, to quite a lot of places and uh, give you a ton of opportunities. But at the end of the day, it's just a game and uh, go out there and have fun. And uh, like you said, I mean, that's what you guys were able to do this past season to finish with an overall record nine and three and make an appearance in the FCS playoffs. Have a have a week one bye in the playoffs and uh, you know have a home playoff game. So it, it was uh, certainly a pretty successful season. I. I, I would say myself, obviously, I'm sure you guys probably had bigger aspirations, uh, you know, playing in a championship game after the, the very uh, hot regular season that you guys had. Now, um, throughout your four years, Don, whether it was while you were at Arizona or, you know, these last uh, couple of years at Portland State, uh, who would you say is the best player that you've gone up against? I mean, is there anybody specific that uh, stands out? Where, as a Beavis event or a tight end? Uh, give me tight end. Give me tight end. As a tight end, honestly, um, I'll stay. Home. I'll stay with my team. Um, honestly, the best, the best player I've gone up against as a tight end from a uh, from a blocking standpoint, block had to block was uh, Sadat Suleiman. He's who's actually on my team. He's he, he he's another guy who was a diamond in a rough who who was playing a lot of D tackle this year, but he's really a defensive end. He was doing it just. Because he it needed him there, and he was taking one for the team, you know. And with that guy, he's he's very explosive off the ball. He's kind of like a, a a Justin Houston or like a James Harrison type guy, like where he he's very powerful off the ball. Where like I'm known to be a strong and powerful guy, and there was times where I struggled against him. So he he's the one person I think as a tight end was the hardest person to go up against in the trenches. I like from. Not even from a size standpoint, because I can't. I went up against guys three times bigger than him in the other on other teams and stuff like that, or, or at bigger schools or whatever. And he was the toughest guy to go up against, regardless. Um, and from from, from a running routes and just uh, try to go past people was, um, I would say, <laughs> this is. I don't know. I, there's no buy. I don't know if I'm trying. I'm being biased, but. Uh, Patrick on Russell, our safety, who, mm-hmm. who who's the one of the finalists for the FCS Player of the Year. He's one of the hardest safeties to go up against because he's very physical at the point of attack, and he's big and he's almost the same size as a D lineman that he covers. So he leads the nation in picks. So that that guy. So basically, I stayed home. Basically, my teammates, my those two teammates were the hardest guys I had a challenge with, honestly. And it says a lot about the, the talent there at Portland State. Um, like you said, I mean, you guys have a ton of talent, and it really did show this past season. Um, and, and, you know, here we are, Dom. I mean, your, your time as a collegiate athlete has come and gone. Uh, for those who may not be too familiar with your game, um, if you were to compare yourself to somebody currently playing in the NFL, it, it could be a defensive end, it could be a tight end. Hell, you could give us both if you'd like. Uh, who would you compare yourself to? Um, definitely as a defensive end, I would definitely compare myself to Robert Mathis, that player. Explosive off the ball, good hands. I don't just rely on natural athletic ability. I actually have pass rush skills where I know how to throw a move. And I, I, I even remember recall one time uh, on Instagram, I commented on uh, Robert Mathis's page, and he saw one of my video clips on Instagram, and he commented back and was very impressed with the way I was rushing. So, like, I really love his game. I really think I could compare myself after him. And also, like, a Javon Kirk type player where, like, you know, very powerful off the ball, too. And, and just, like, like, I could also play the run. I'm just not a 
pass rusher. So, uh, and read my keys and stuff like that. So, so that's for these men. And for tight end, uh, I'm, I could be like, uh, I'm like a, a Vernon Davis type speed guy and um, a, a Virgil Green from the Broncos type guy. And, uh, um, you know, like guy like Will Ty that, that plays for the Giants, mm-hmm. actually. Uh, um, me and him are in the same agency. He's signed with the same agent. Um, he he's the type, those are the type of guys I could compare myself to. I could block and I could catch the ball. So, yeah. Okay, and yeah, I mean, all, all these guys have had a, a nice career in the NFL. Obviously, uh, Will Ty, he, he's still in his rookie season with the Giants, but uh, that guy seems like he has a, a nice future playing football as well. Once again, he's a defensive end, tight end out of Portland State, formerly of the University of Arizona, Dom Njai, and uh, joining me here on the CS Podcast presented by the NUC NFL Draft Bible as he gets set for the 2016 NFL Draft. And uh, switching gears here for a moment, uh, Dom, I mean, seeing as your season has been over for for just about two weeks, I mean, not even two weeks. So what have you been doing since that Northern Iowa game? Personally, I would guess that you've probably been giving your, your body a little bit of a break, but uh, what what do you, and also what do you plan on doing uh, from here on out until the NFL draft comes around? Um, Honestly, for me, uh, for the past two weeks, I just I just finished signing with my agent. I just, my agent, Marcus Williams, um, uh, he's been a guy I've, that's it, that 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 I've been I'm interested in. He's a good he's a good agent. Um, also, I just been resting my body, like you said, and uh, I, I I've, I've been trying to actually like put on some weight. Um, put on about a good five six pounds, um, which is just just before I start my training, so I can have that weight just to keep bulking up a little bit more to uh, to be to be the weight I want to be. Okay, and you know what, I'm glad you mentioned your agent's name, uh, Marcus Williams. I'll tell you what, Marcus Williams is a smart man for uh, signing you to his agency, man. Uh, again, I think uh, you have a ton of potential. Uh, just a few more questions, and then I'll let you go. I really do appreciate your time. Um, you mentioned that you're, you're going to try getting a, a few more pounds. Uh, I do see that the Portland State Athletics uh, website, they have you listed at 6'4", 235 pounds. I mean, uh, how, how accurate is that? Uh. That was like my sophomore year. It's not accurate. I'm, I'm <laughs> 245 right now. Okay. And uh, it's crazy. I should have told somebody to change that. But right now I'm 245. Um, I'm just trying to gain. I'm just trying to get up to 250. Um, okay. My metabolism is not the the, the slowest, so uh, it's easy for me to. It's easy. It's harder for me to gain weight than most. <laughs> so I don't have a lot of body fat. It's about three percent body fat. So that's about my yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, uh, again, uh, you are uh, one hell of an athlete. I mean, you're you're in shape. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Like you said, I mean, about three percent body fat. That's uh, that's insane. Now, um, any idea when and where your pro day may be at? And uh, I know that you know the season just ended, so you may not know that information just yet. But uh, also, any idea where you uh, you'll be training at until your pro day? Um, so uh, our pro day most likely is going to be in March. Is the date is not set yet. Um, I think I will find out soon. But uh, for training, I had a couple of options um, between uh, Ford, Ford Sports in Seattle and um, other places in Portland area. But uh, I'm going to go to Vancouver, Washington, Vancouver, Washington with uh, my guy Ryan Paul from New Athlete. Um, I believe in his product. He's a good trainer. And I think I'm going to train with him. He's, 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 he knows his stuff, you know, so. Um, I think I think I've said on that. I get to stay. I basically stay at home, train here. Uh, I love being in Portland. It's, it's a great place to focus. So uh, it won't be a problem for me. Hey, that's that's what it's all about. I mean, and how how different is Portland from you know growing up in New York? Oh, very different. <laughs> uh, Portland much safer. Uh, um, stay out of trouble. Um, you basically just. Everybody is peaceful, clean, mind your business here and you know, I like it, you know, I like I like I like being in places like this where, you know, a little bit off the radar and, and just it's it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool like pretty cool place to be. Hey, there, there you go. And uh, you mentioned that you're probably going to be staying in Portland while you uh, train for your pro day. Uh, what are your goals for your pro day? I mean, do you have any numbers in mind that you'd like to hit? I mean, uh, your your pro day is obviously, as you know, it's going to be a huge opportunity for you. Um, yeah, pro day will be a big day for me. Um, 
right now for the 40, um, I, know I, I, I set my bar high. I'm, I'm trying to look to run a, 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 a late 4.49 around there, like a 4.49. If not, 4.5, anywhere in the 4.5 is fine. Um, I've, I've ran all these times before in the past. And uh, I, I mean, I haven't run a lot of 40s in college, but I ran these times in the past in high school. I used to be a track runner, so I, I know it's in me. So I just have to train hard and see where, where, where that goes. And as far as jumping and stuff, um, uh, I would like to try to go reach for 40 in vertical. You know, my vertical is pretty high. I don't, I don't want to put a set number on it yet, but that, that's, that's where that's basically. Um, aiming for 40 and, and, and right now, I know, I know where I'm at right now, where I could jump right now if I had, if I, if I was just, if I just got off the bed, you know, but, um, uh, like, and for broad, I would like anywhere in the tens and, um, you know, um, all these numbers for me and the 225 bench, that's, I'm pretty good at that. I would like anywhere in late twenties, early thirties. So, I mean, Anywhere these numbers, all these numbers are very reachable for me. Um, I've done all of them before. I've done everything, I, uh, all these numbers before. So, um, so, so basically, I just have to keep training. You know, to, um, when pro day come, I'll be ready. I'll definitely be ready. I will definitely surprise a lot of people and knock on a lot of doors. I, I already, I know that for sure. Oh, man, oh. if you're able to put up those type of numbers, there's no doubt about it. If you're able to achieve those goals that you have, I mean, there's no doubt about it that uh, you'll certainly uh, open the eyes of many. I mean, I, I seen last year there's a small school wide receiver by the name of Isaiah Ferguson of the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff in the SWAC uh, conference, and, uh, you know, he's like a 6'5 wide receiver. He, You know, he didn't have all the stats, um, he didn't have a lot of, you know, big time plays or anything like that. He had a few, uh, but but not the big time stats, you know, nothing like that. You, you but uh, you know, he absolutely dominated his pro day. I think he, he had like a four four forty. Uh, did well in the vert, you know, did well on the bench press, and uh, he went on to get an opportunity with the St. Louis Rams. So um, yeah, I mean, like you said, like you know, I mean, the pro day is going to be huge for you. And again, if you're able to hit any of those numbers uh, that you just mentioned, um, that that will certainly help you out uh, quite a bit. I have I have a pretty good feeling on that. Now, final question for you, uh, Dom. Now, I really do appreciate your time again. Uh, we've been connected for a while, and uh, it's certainly a pleasure chatting with you. I'll end the interview uh, with this. If an NFL general manager was listening to this very interview, why should they want Dom Enjai a part of his team? Um, I think uh, a GM who will listen to this would just appreciate just a blue-collar guy who, who just who basically who just appreciates just – Given an opportunity, just nothing, just nothing ever came easy for me. So um, I always feel like I feel like I've never taken anything for granted, and I always I'm always gonna come to work every day, do more than ask for me, stay after practice if I have to, watch extra film if I have to. Um, of course, definitely off the field, never in trouble, stay out of trouble, always helping in the community, and 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 I, I just those are things I just don't say. I actually do. So basically. Um, I feel like like those are things I actually put into action. So uh, a GM, I think, will, will, will definitely, you know, I feel like it would be in his favor for, for them to give me an opportunity. So I feel like it wouldn't be taking a risk. Yeah, and you know what? Again, again, we've been connected for a while, and yeah, I mean, you, you are uh, not only a heck of an athlete. I think you have a ton of potential, but uh, you are also a great person off the field, so they wouldn't have to worry about that at all. Like I said, that was my final question for you, man. I really do appreciate your time, and uh, certainly wishing you all the best as uh, you know you get set for the 2016 NFL Draft, man. I'm, I'm excited for you. All right, thank you so much, man. Appreciate the appreciate the call.